Hello there everyone and welcome to your weekly MTA plan work video for the Queen Subways and the Long Island Railroad for the weekend of Friday June 21st 2019 and lasting until June 24th 2019 it is officially the first weekend of summer summer solstice is upon us now and we are only officially two weeks away from the 4th of July. So, everyone's looking forward to that, hopefully. But needless to say, this is going to be a brief presentation this week. And I do apologize about that. Uh, something fell on me, but it's going to be brief. There's some things you gotta talk about, but hopefully it won't be that long, so. Let's get started with the Queen Subways. Let's talk about our purple friend. Is there any work on the 7? Well, unfortunately, guess what? This is not good news for Grateful Dead fans. Flushing Main Street bound 7 trains are going to be skipping 82nd, 90th, 103rd, and 111th Street in Queens because of track maintenance. This will only be taking place on Sunday, June 23rd from 3.45 a.m. to 10 p.m. on Sunday. So once again, shame on MTA for screwing customers going to the Grateful Dead concert. Shame on them. Now all those customers at those stations are going to get screwed because now they have no way to get to City Field. How about the N? Unfortunately, once again, the MTA did not speak with the Motion Pictures Association of America to talk about screwing people trying to get to Coffin 14 this weekend. Because guess what? I have to read this along with you. 22nd to the 23rd, 3.45 a.m. Saturday, 10 p.m. Sunday. We have station renewal. So that means the shuttle buses are going to be replacing N service. Again, between the hot spots, Dead Mars Boulevard and Queensboro Plaza. So, once again, they're screwing the movie industry. Fantastic. You know, some people didn't get to see Men in Black last week. Or, especially again, you have Toy Story 4 coming out. Oh, not to mention, Godzilla's out this weekend. So, fantastic. Thanks, thanks MTA. Once again, another interesting movie, su summer, summer movie fest ruining Astoria. Thanks to you. And service will run between Coney Island, Stillwell Avenue, and Queensboro Plaza. So if you need service to the Mermaid Parade on Saturday, that shouldn't be a problem. Free shuttle buses will make all end stops between Queensboro Plaza and Dittmar's Boulevard. Some buses departing Dittmar's Boulevard will run express to... Oh. Now, th this is just a complete screw job. I'm sorry to say that. Transfer between trains and buses of Queensboro Plaza. Ugh. Once again, Astoria Boulevard's closed for station renewal. By the way, again, I'm not going to talk about the M. Because talking about the M is just repetitive and we know the M work is going to continue until next year thanks to the L train project so I'm not even going to bring it up anymore so let's just move on to the R by the way I'll just mention it again M trains are only running between Middle Village and 2nd Avenue 96th Street that's it okay that's all I'm going to say now let's go on to the R so if you need service along the Queens Boulevard line, the good news is you will have your R service. So if you need local service, take the R this weekend. How about the E? Let's get into what's going on with the E this weekend. Because we got a lot of big headaches on the E. Unfortunately, yes, track maintenance. June 21st to the 24th, 11.45 p.m. Friday to 5 a.m. Monday. Service between Briarwood 
in Jamaica Center in Queens is replaced by free shuttle buses. June 21st to the 24th, 9.45 p.m. Friday to 5 a.m. Monday. World Trade Center bound E-trains will skip 23rd and Spring Street in Manhattan due to track maintenance. For service to these stations, take the E to 14th or Canal Street and then transfer to an uptown A local, C or E. For service from these stations, take the A, C or E to West 4th Street, Washington Square Park or 34th Street Penn Station and transfer to a World Trade Center bound E train. June 22nd to the 24th, 12.01 a.m. Saturday to 5 a.m. Monday. E trains will run local in both directions between Queens Plaza and Forest Hill 71st Avenue because of signal modernization. This will also be taking place on the F, and we're also going to talk about how this affects the G as well because there's something in Brooklyn we have to discuss that's going to affect both the F and the G. 22nd to the 24th, once again, 12.01 a.m. Saturday to 5 a.m. Monday. Once again, you have signal modernization. This will make the F run local in both directions between Queens, Queens Bridge and Forest Hill 71st Avenue. Now, let's talk about the headache in Brooklyn. 21st to the 24th, 9.45 p.m. Friday to 5 a.m. Monday. Queensbound FNG trains will skip Ford Hamilton Parkway. 15th Street Prospect Park and 4th Avenue Ninth Street in Brooklyn because of track maintenance. So, big headache in Brooklyn. Uh, that's all I'm going to say, but I don't know if there's an event at Barclays, but if there is an event at Barclays, uh, that's going to be a big headache. That's for sure. If people need to get over to Fulton Street. Now let's talk about the A and the C. June 21st to the 24th, 9.45 p.m. Friday to 5 a.m. Monday, Queensbound A and C trains were one express from Hoyt Skimmerhorn Street to Usulet Avenue because of station maintenance. Also, like with the E train, 21st to the 24th, 9.45 p.m. Friday to 5 a.m. Monday, Downtown ANCs will skip 50th Street, 23rd Street, and Spring Street because of track maintenance. 21st to the 24th, 10 p.m. Friday to 5 a.m. Monday. Uptown A trains will be running local from Canal Street to 59th Street, Columbus Circle because of track maintenance. And lastly, let's talk about the J. This is only going to be in Manhattan. 21st to the 24th, 9.45 p.m. Friday to 5 a.m. Monday. J trains will not run between Broad Street and Chamber Street because of track maintenance. Use the 4 to 5. Use the 4 to 5 on nearby Fulton Street, Wall Street, or Bowling Green stations instead. Transfer at Chamber Street, Brooklyn Bridge. With that, let's go to the Long Island Railroad planned work segment of this video and we'll read some press releases. So now we have reached the Long Island Railroad service changes portion of our video along with the press releases that we're going to be reading. There are very important press releases that I will be reading besides this one. Two of them I will preview include uh, Governor Cuomo announcing back on Monday June 17th about uh, police officers trying to combat fare evasion on the buses and subways, and an announcement in Staten Island from Congressman Max Rose about a new bus fleet, and of course, more information about Omni, One Metro New York. So we'll get to that later on before I wrap up this video, but let's start with our planned service changes for this weekend. Before I get to the... Uh, Waste the Bay work, which is very important. We'll, we will get to that. I have to read this press release because it's uh, very important that I do that before I show you all the schedules. So, we have a very big weekend here in the New York metropolitan area. Next weekend is another big event taking place on Sunday, June 30th in Manhattan, which I will go more in depth about that next weekend, which is another very important LGBT event for um, Pride Month for the month of June. But anyhow, uh, we have a lot of events here in the New York metropolitan area taking place this weekend. 
June 22nd and June 23rd, so that is Saturday and Sunday. First up, we will have the annual Long Beach Pride on the Beach Fest. We have the 29th annual Long Island Pride Parade, which will be taking place within walking distance of the Long Island Railroad's Long Beach train station. Train service will operate hourly throughout the course of the weekend and to help customers get to the event, the LIRR will be operating six extra trains over the course of this weekend, which will be making added stops between Penn Station and Long Beach. On both Saturday and Sunday, the 22nd and the 23rd, extra trains will depart from Penn Station at 10.02 a.m., 12.18 a.m., and 4.59 p.m. Returning westbound extra trains will depart Long Beach at 11.45 a.m., 3.45 p.m., and 6.12 p.m. So, we'll take a look at the schedule in just a second. Now, we'll quickly mention the Coney Island Mermaid Parade, and I will quickly mention, um, if you want to go to that from Queens, the fastest way I would recommend doing it is just take the, take the Atlantic Branch and then just transfer to the uh, subway that way because it's just a, a whole lot easier dealing with the D and the Q lines at Atlantic Avenue and Barclays. It, it, it saves a lot of time. So if you got the cash, just do a round trip Atlantic ticket and you'll save more time that way. But anyhow, let's just talk about the subway routes in general. So I'm just trying to see if we can pull up this information. Ah, here we go. So the Mermaid Parade, which um, quickly mentioned that my parents, friends in Mill Basin always look forward to this every year. They always do. So let's just quickly go into the parade route. I know it's a little bit off topic, but, you know, it's it's a very important event. I won't go into Long Beach that much, but uh, parade will start at West 21st Street and Surf Avenue in Coney Island. Parade route will roll east to West 10th Street. At West 10th Street, the parade will turn south towards the boardwalk. Cars and motorized floats continue down Surf Avenue, passing West 10th Street and exiting the parade. At the boardwalk, the marches and push-pull floats will turn west and head towards West 17th Street. At Steeplechase Plaza, the parade will disband. So, once again, very important parade. It's a very historic one. It's been going on now for 37 years, so that is incredible. Well, 36, but, you know... So pretty much, this parade is the nation's largest art parade and one of New York City's great summer events. Uh, City of Ancient Mythology and Honky Tonk Ranch rolls to the seaside. It showcases over 3,000 creative individuals from all over the five boroughs and beyond, opening the summer with incredible art, entrepreneurial spirit, and community pride. The parade highlights Coney Island's pageantry based on a century of many Coney parades, Celebrating the artistic vision of the masses and ensures that the summer season is a success by bringing hundreds of thousands of people to the amusement area in a single day. There were three goals when this parade first started in 1983. To bring mythology to life for local residents who live on streets named Mermaid and Neptune. Create self-esteem in a district that is often disregarded as entertainment. And it lets artistic New Yorkers find self-expression in public. Again, this is very important. You know, I, I I know how it's a big deal for the city. And believe it or not, New York One's actually sponsoring this parade. Look at that. New York One. So that is uh, interesting. Usually the Daily News sponsors this parade. I guess not. But yeah, here's the here's a couple of the uh, couple of the pictures. And I do apologize for that picture. You know, it's on the website, but I know they always, uh, the performers like to go on the subway stations, and uh, that's why I know pretty well from my parents' friends that overall they look forward to it. They look forward to it every year. It's like the only time of the year where they actually go to Coney Island. And of course, Nathan's, you gotta go get your Nathan's to Coney Island, which uh, I haven't been there in four years, but I'm hoping maybe next summer... I can add Coney Island for an agenda item because this summer with the time constraints it's just not going to work out. But anyhow, um, 
let's talk about the parade. It'll be from 1 o'clock to 6 p.m. on Saturday the 22nd. You can use the D, F, N, and Q trains to Corny Island, Stillwell Avenue. So again, uh, you can catch the D train and the Q at Atlantic Avenue and Barclays if you're coming from Queens. Because again, don't, don't even think about attempting to take the F. In general, I'm just going to say don't. Because I'm letting you know right now, the whole trip just takes a whole lot longer. Versus, again, knowing the Atlantic branch is available this weekend, take it. That's what I'd say. Anyhow, uh, let's continue reading. Parade. Right, we already read that part. Right, so uh, bus routes in Brooklyn will be rerouted. I'm not going to get into that. I'll quickly read this because this is important. Customers are reminded that Coney Island bound end trains run express from 8th Avenue to Bay Parkway due to ongoing station rehabilitation work. Uh, ongoing maintenance, repair, and upgrade work to make up 179th Street bound F trains run express from Avenue X to Smith Knight Street. Uh, so, giving you all a warning now, you may have to deal with headaches. The outbound Q trains will run express from Kings Highway to Prospect Park. So that is just a big headache right there. And lastly, um, we have Den & Company at City Field. Um, there's going to be uh, older Deadhead and newer Vans of the Grateful Dead. Uh, you will have extra train service. So there will be added stops at Mets Woods Point along the Port Washington branch to assist fans before and after the concert. The LIRR westbound service will begin with the 342 train from Port Washington. Eastbound service will begin with the 3.40 p.m. train from Penn Station. A total of 34 trains will make the Mets World's Point stop in each direction and after the concert has ended. Trains will continue to stop at Mets World's Point until concert goers have been accommodated. So, uh, this is interesting. I will make that point very clear. Um, other customers coming from Eastern Long Island should consult branch timetables for service to Woodside, where you can transfer for Port Washington branch. Hopefully, there will be no temporary platforms this weekend. You can't have temporary platforms. So if there's any crazy heroin interlocking work that we don't know about, or you check it, you check it, you check it, it's not going to be good. So I'm going to advise everybody right now, if you can, if you can get directly to a Port Washington Ranch Station this weekend and avoid this going transferring at Woodside, Please do so. Please do so. Because I would not recommend going to Woodside if possible. Because you don't know if they're going to put temporary platforms up. So if you don't want to deal with them, take my advice. Go that route. <clears throat> Another thing I could recommend, you know, for avoiding the temporary platforms is, you know, Find another alternative to get to a Port Washington branch station if you're not driving. That's what I'm trying to say correctly, because that siren just... I knew that siren was coming. There was like two sirens that just came by me, so that's why it was a little off track there. I didn't mean to say that. So let's just get back on topic. So let's take a look at our schedules, and we will, of course, get to the very important Wife the Bay branch work this weekend, which, again... I have to criticize the railroad for I really do because they did the same thing last year so anyhow um, got your schedules right here and I'll quickly mention back on Tuesday when I was at Limbrook they did have the schedules so I gotta give the railroad credit they actually had the schedules at Limbrook already back on Tuesday which was the uh, 18th so that's kudos to them and you have your um, Fort Washington schedule, you know, because of course you got to have your schedule. So now let's get to this, because this wasn't on the Long Island Railroad Service Chain's website, or releasing a press release as I'm recording this. So anyhow, we have servicing of the Buckham Road Bridge replacement work. Buses will be replacing trains between Locust Valley and Oyster Bay. Some Friday night service is also affected. Let's take a look at this. 
Oh boy, let's see. Let's see. Oh no! You gotta be kidding me. This is all day. This is all day, folks. So I'm gonna give an advisory right now that if you can find parking in downtown Glen Cove and you wanna drive, because remember, N27 doesn't run on weekends. I'm gonna say this right now. Do go that route because it's just easier to deal with than worrying about. Oh no, you don't have to worry about the buses. At least the good news is, it's only between Locust Valley and Oyster Bay. So let's look. Let's see what happens when we Google this. Berkham Road. Berkham Road. Let's look it up. So I have a friend who lives in um in Locust Valley. So let's just take a look and I'll show you the bridge. Ah, oh, came up, good. <laughs> look at that, look at that. Came up right here, Brookham Road. So let's take a look and see the um, the bridge replacement, if we can find it. Okay, here we go, here we go. So this is where I think the bridge is. Let's just pull it up. So, looks like this is going to be the bridge that's going to be replaced this weekend, so... Looks like also motorists are going to be screwed by this this weekend. Ah, oh, that is just terrible. So, we're going to have to give an advisory to motorists that avoid this area in Locust Valley because... It's going to be a headache. Trust me. It's going to be a really big headache. So, if you need to go to Oyster Bay this weekend, just use Duck Pond Road and then cut back to Oyster Bay uh, Road that way if you need to get into Oyster Bay this weekend. That would be my recommendation. Now as far as where the buses are going to be, and I will theorize this because, you know, I kind of know Locust Valley pretty well because, again, I have a friend who lives up here. So I'm thinking they're probably going to have to put the buses by Elm Street. I mean, where else are you going to put the buses? So I'll give you a prediction of where I think the buses will probably be parked yeah they're probably gonna have to be over here on Elm Street I mean where else are you gonna put the buses they have to be over here so that's where I'm thinking they're probably gonna put it now the only negative thing is uh, Locust Valley has a small downtown it's not like Oyster Bay because well, Oyster Bay I'll, I'll mention this Oyster Bay is you know Oyster Bay is more to do and you, don't forget, you have Teddy Roosevelt Memorial Park with the beach. So, I do want to go to Oyster Bay, which I'm aiming to go in September, actually. I actually am aiming to go in September. As long as I can just transfer that um, Mineola like I did the last time. Which I know I'm a hypocrite for saying Mineola this, Mineola that, but what choice do I have if I'm going on a weekday? I've done it once when I went to Wollaston Park on a weekday, so... Exactly. Hang on, this Nino's Pizza. That's where I was actually thinking of going to grab lunch. Here we go, see? This place. I actually got four and a half stars. So I actually have to save up money for that if I'm going to do Oyster Bay and do um, Teddy Roosevelt Park. Let's get back on track. Let's go to our press releases. So if you didn't hear the news back on Monday, um, New York Governor Andrew Cuomo announced agreement to add 500 additional uniformed officers to New York City subway and bus systems to improve public safety, protect workers, and combat fare evasion. The comprehensive plan was launched by New York State, New York City, the Manhattan District's Attorney's Office led by Cy Vance, the NYPD, the MTA headed by Pat Foy, and Transit Workers Association U Union, the President Local 100 Tony Utano. So pretty much, um, here's some alarming stats we have to read about. Assaults responded by the New York City Transit workers were up 15% in four years lost revenue from fare evasion. Increased from $105 million in 2015 to $225 million in 2018. So, uh, you know, it's just alarming. It really is. And... What's very alarming is that they're saying up 15% in four years. 
Well, uh, I don't know what they've... I don't know if that's true or not in the past four years, but again, we got to remember, folks, you know, these reported incidents, again, came back in August of last year. Well, that's 10 months ago. So, it took them 10 months to realize after that first... Again, I'm sorry, but the governor should have realized after that first attack on the B-15 in Brooklyn last year that something should have been done last year. 10 months. That's what I'm mad at him for. All right, so uh, once again, the announcement was made on Monday, June 17th, an agreement to add 500 additional uniformed officers to the New York City transit system. The agreement was also reached with my mayor. Okay, I'm a little bit shocked. Since when did de Blasio start to um, get involved in police matters? Mm -mm -mm -mm. Shame, shame, shame. Uh, once again, you have Manhattan District Attorney Cy Vance, uh, Commissioner of the, the NYPD James Neal, and MTA Chairman Pat Voigt as part of a comprehensive action plan to improve safety across New York City's mass transit system, addressing the rising number of assaults on transit workers and combat the growing problem of fare evasion. From 2013 to 2017, assaults were reported by NYCT workers have increased by 15.2%. That number probably riz in the past two years, in the past 10 months. Let's just go with that time frame. And lost revenue from verification increased from 105 million in 2015 and 225 million in 2018. New data released back on Monday shows the upward trend in continuing with year-to-date totals, reaching 243 million in a 12-month period ending in March of 2019. The new program also includes additional measures to deter fare evasion with enhanced exit grades and additional monitors and cameras throughout the system. As part of this plan, the New York City District Attorney will provide $40 million over four years to fund associated costs of the personnel and provide construction modifications and new video technology to uh, target station locations. <sighs> Again, I don't even want. I don't even want to read these people's quotes. Up. It, it just. It's gonna make me more angry. Ridiculous. Exactly. Exactly. It makes me. It makes me look like a joke. I pay one thirty-five. I pay my one thirty-five. Ridiculous. Ay 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 ay. I am just so annoyed right now. Oh, I forgot to look up one more thing that I have to bring up with you all. I will just pull it up in just a second. Thankfully, I actually remembered the new URL for the MTA. <laughs> so let's just quickly talk about Staten Island. Um, it's a forgotten borough, and we have to bring this up because, again, no one cares about Staten Island. No one seems to care about Staten Island. And I'm shouting out Cuomo corruption. You know, this is for you. This is for you. So anyhow, uh, MTA leadership and Congressman Max Rose announced new state-of-the-art bus fleet. And of course, contact was paid fairment system on Staten Island. 77 new buses will be going to local and select bus routes, uh, service, uh, select bus route service routes across Staten Island this year. 50 new coach buses will be purchased and put in express bus service in 2021. Staten Island bus customers embrace new contactless pay payment system beyond initial protections. Alright, so pretty much um, they made the announcement back on Monday. And it's pretty interesting. You know, you're going to have um, USB charging ports, Wi-Fi and digital screens and safety technology such as pedestrian turn warning system and cameras. They will replace the Orion hybrid buses from 2009, currently in service on Staten Island, and will be used on routes operating out of the Yukon bus depot. So, Cuomo corruption, I know this is your bus depot, so that's why I'm bringing it up. Alright, so this will also include S79 select bus service. Additionally, the MTA is going to, again, put new buses in 2021. I'm not going to read the quote from Andy Byford, and I don't want to read Max Rose, because again, uh, 
Let's talk about Omni for a second and how successful it's been in Staten Island so far. Once again, we had Omni, which was um, put into the pilot phase on Friday, May 31st. Um, it was a new contactless payment fare system to replace the outdated Metro card technology. It will be completely gone by 2023. The public pilot includes all Staten Island buses where hundreds of customers are using their own preferred contactless pay a contactless fare payment method to pay fares and speed their entry on the buses without needing to buy a metro card or find exact change. When the first week of the pilot, Staten Island customers using one metro New York have far exceeded initial estimates of 800 to 1,500 taps per week. And it's not just Cuomo corruption. It's also my other fellow advocate, Jason Anthony Pinero, which we'll bring him up in a second because I forgot to look up something I was supposed to look up earlier, but I know how to get to it. So that's good news. That is very good news. Um, hmm. Really? So now they're also trying to do another bus redesign. So that's interesting. So the Bronx, Queens, and now Staten Island is going to get a bus tree design. Three boroughs. That's very interesting. Environmental study that will take 24 months. So, looks like we'll have an answer by June of 2021, it looks like. So anyhow, let's go to the new MTA website. Click on News. And let's talk about... Board and committee meetings. Yes, we have to talk about this. So, if you are not aware of what's going on, this Monday, June 24th, we will have our monthly MTA committee meetings. And uh, unfortunately, another month with joint Metro North and Long Island Railroad. That's just a big headache. I don't want to hear Kathleen Manali speak. I, I just don't. I really don't. It's like, again, I want to know about the Long Island Railroad, not Metro North. Anyhow, um, New York City Transit MTA bus meeting will be at 10 a.m. Bridges and tunnels will be at um, um, 1 o'clock. Finance meeting, 1.30. CPOC, 2.30. Diversity meeting at 3.30. And you have the audit meeting at 8.30 and board meeting the full board will be meeting on Wednesday, June 26th. And of course, my fellow colleague, Jason Anthony Panero, will be attending. Uh, fortunately, due to my schedule, I don't think I'm going to be able to attend um, Passengers United event, which I really wanted to come to that event and talk about uh, making sure we keep a LANC ticket and possibly even getting freedom ticket done which is supposed to be a ticket program for um you know i'm trying to find the picture i do apologize okay so here is what passengers help tweeted the um ceo of passengers united so pretty much he tweeted we are passengers united for the extension of land ticket to freedom ticket now is your opportunity to tell the MTA, to tell the MTA, sorry about that, I thought, I thought that was a comma, a little typo there, but alright, Queens residents deserve it, let's zoom it in, I, I do apologize, I know most people are on a phone and they can't see it, that's better, alright, here we go, Queens residents deserve a cheaper and faster option to Atlantic Terminal in Brooklyn and Penn Station in Manhattan. So, um, once again, the Passengers United Advocacy Group, led by Passengers Help, will be at the committee meeting this Monday, June 24th, at 8 a.m. Now, originally, you know, I was supposed to go on Monday, because that was actually my day off from Osnum. E either way, I was due a day off anyway, because, oh. You know, I don't know. That's one Monday where they have resident council, but pretty much um, can't go through the other commitments I've made for that day. Queens residents deserve a cheaper investor. Right, I already read that. 
So let's read some interesting facts before we wrap up this video. LAWR announced that there was no overcrowding on trains and reported a profit with a LANC ticket of millions of dollars. In fact, over 800,000 LANC tickets were sold during the pilot program. And Long Island Railroad President Philip Bing supports turning the Atlantic Avenue branch into a subway with turnstile of the Scoot Shuttle is implemented. Passengers United wants to see the following options including in the MTA board presentation under consideration. Brooklyn only options of next phase of pilot. A fare of $375 for a one-way off-peak Atlantic ticket. $45 to $50 for a weekly Long Island Railroad 7-day Metro Car Pass only to Atlantic Terminal and all time 7 days a week. $145 sewn 3 monthly combined with plastic unlimited 30 day metro card only to Atlantic Terminal at all times. Freedom ticket options to Penn Station to be considered a next phase of pilot. $65 for a weekly Long Island Railroad and 7 day unlimited metro card to Atlantic Terminal or Hunters Point Avenue with overnight and weekend access to Penn Station. So let's see. Right, we already read that one. All right, so pretty much um, that's the plan. I agree with passengers' help. I think this plan is um, pretty good. I like this plan. And who knows, maybe 375 to Penn would be awesome. So with that, I'm going to wrap up this week's service changes video. So thank you all very much for watching. And until the next one, please take care.